two items on the agenda items, under agenda items, actually four, Longwood Gardens demolition, the case property easement, dog leash ordinance, and Cypress Street study. Um, why don't we start off with the first, and it has to do with the Longwood Gardens demolition permit. I will open the audience to <coughs> questions or comments. Please. My name is Mary Sue Boyle, I'm the retaining consultant, historic preservation consultant for the Tenant Planning Commission, and I do have a prepared statement for this evening. Mm -hmm. I will be referencing letters in my statement, and I'd like you each to have a copy. I, You're all right. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, Longwood is a tax exempt corporation and not an individual with property rights being denied. Their income was $161 million in their last 990 filing and with 1,100 plus acres they can find no small area to accommodate these historic resources. $12 million was received in the same year from the Longwood Foundation by Tibongwood Incorporated, which was established and funded by Pierre before his death and is dedicated to the people, environment, and communities of Delaware and Pennsylvania. And the foundation does include these three houses. Combined assets of $1.2 billion and this application claims hardship, but I've made no effort to demonstrate the hardship factually. They have not presented a factual analysis of costs to rehab, demolish, or move the houses, all required by the ordinance. The ramifications of the Kenneth Supervisor's action this evening and in the future will echo the National Trust, the Pennsylvania Historic and Museum Commission, and many historic preservation entities and individuals in and around Kennett Township. As you will note, there are letters from PHMC, Preservation Alliance of Greater Philadelphia, Chester County Historic Preservation Network, the Executive Director of Preservation Pennsylvania, the Executive Director of the Pennsylvania Hunt, the Advisor Emeritus of the National Trust for Historic Preservation, and Thornberry Delaware County Township Historic Commission. I point to the letter from the PHMC, which is the first, and that is dated uh, the 21st of June, 2012, addressed to Longwood Gardens. And this is relative to the Meadows Project. And relative to the structures, PHMC, PHMC states, in our opinion, this project will have an effect on the National Register listed Longwood Gardens. Furthermore, it is our opinion that this project, which includes the demolition of these three, con three contributing buildings, will adversely affect the historic and architectural qualities that make the property eligible. To comply with the regulations of the Advisory Council of Historic Preservation, the Army Corps of Engineers must follow the procedures outlined in 36 CFR 800.6 when, when the effects are adverse. Subsequent to that, the ape, as we call her, the area of potential effect, was shifted. However, uh, Monday, March 18th, Gene Cutler, uh, Executive Director of PHMC, responded to me in email. Uh, the road alignment project anticipated a Corps of Engin Army Corps of Engineers permit, hence the letter I sent to you. However, the court changed the APE, the area of potential effect, and the houses were not within the new APE. Despite the change, the SHPO, State Historic Preservation Officer, made a determination that the houses were historically significant. This determination is on record regardless of whether there's a core permit or not. It just means that Section 106 consultation is not required. That's relative to the Meadows Project. I quote Paul Redman, uh, West State has demonstrated a genuine sensitivity to our heritage, the living legacy of Pierre DuPont. We're confident with this sensitivity and ingenuity 
West 8 will develop a plan that is respectful of our heritage and deeply rooted in our commitment to innovation, design excellence, environmental stewardship, and sustainability. Tearing down historic resources is not sustainable environmental stewardship. It appears West 8 never consulted the ordinances that pertain to Longwood Gardens, which is the first step in creating an effective comprehensive plan. Kennett Planning Commission has recommended a 90-day delay. The houses have been found to be structurally sound by a structural engineer retained by Kennett Township Planning Commission. The house's historic integrity and contribution to the National Register Historic District has been thoroughly demonstrated. Longwood has been unbending in several rounds of the negotiations, although they recognize the houses as historic. They will not discuss future plans for Longwood other than restoring a house that has no direct contribution to the legacy of Longwood. We therefore recommend a 90-day delay enabling time for East Marlboro Township, Pensbury, and Kennett Township to sit down and digest the Longwood Comprehensive Plan and work together to generate a resolution that respects all historic resources on the Longwood property. Kennett Supervisor's decision will set a precedent for all historic resources on the property going forward. Demolish it and it will reverberate through the bones of every historic resource in all three municipalities. Preserve and protect the intent of the Longwood Foundation is a more genuine, tangible resolution to the demolition permit before us all. Thank you. John. Uh, I've, I've prepared a statement in my own personal view. I've got four copies to pass the desk there. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. I note on the top of this, even though I am a member of the Planning Commission, this statement is my personal opinion and does not represent the position of the Planning Commission. On January 22nd this year, the Planning Commission held an informal meeting in this room with staff members of Longwood Gardens. The purpose of the session was to engage Longwood in a discussion of the comprehensive plan update that is now underway. Chairman Guthrie led the discussion and generally reviewed the process that we were following. The discussion turned to the ordinance requirements for demolition of historic structures, zoning ordinance section 2019. Guthrie outlined the process details and described the possible outcomes. One of the possible outcomes described that the township had the authority to deny a private landowner the right to remove a structure. The majority of the Planning Commission members at that moment did not seem to realize that our ordinance or the state law allowed this degree of control, that is denial of permit, over private property. Our consultant from the Chester County Planning Commission was at the meeting and she assured us and Longwood that such power did exist both in our ordinance and in state law. She added that the enforcement of this law had not been tested in the courts. The denial option came as a surprise to many in the meeting. After that session, some Planning Commission members more carefully researched this claim of authority to deny. We found that indeed our zoning ordinance uh, number 166 of February 19, 2007 did appear to grant this authority to the board. Personally, I knowingly would have not supported this option, which covers, which, which I consider an overreach of authority where our government can dictate how a private owner uses their property. The denial of demolition option was definitely a surprise to me. At the formal planning commission hearing on February 26th, Involving this permit application, I expressed similar concerns about overreach. <clears throat> Basically, I feel that if public interest in a structure is so high as to justify overriding the owner's demolition plans, the municipality should proceed to exercise eminent domain or some other legal process to take the property and have the township residents preserve and maintain the structure for all time 
like a public park or a monument. Some have suggested that our zoning laws contain all sorts of constraints limiting what owners can do with their private property. And the control of demolition is no different. Most zoning regulations are based on protecting the safety, health, and welfare of the community. And this certainly applies to situations for adding improvements, that is structures, for certain uses, or for disturbing the natural state of the land. Demolition, however, is a unique situation where the use and the structure itself are typically completely erased and the land is restored to a more natural state. Therefore, the safety, health, and welfare concerns are minimal or non-existent. Thus, it follows that denial of demolition has no basis in protecting the safety, health, and welfare of the community. The end result of a demolition is to remove a structure, its associated use, and return the impacted area to its natural state. I do not have a problem with the aspects of the demolition ordinance that shines light on a structure or require some deliberation period, read delay in the demolition authorization. I would, however, prefer to change the ordinance to stop short of denial and only exercise the delay period to enable all options to be carefully considered. Further, I feel that the Planning Commission should revisit this section of our zoning ordinance, confirm its legality, and reconsider the now existing language which permits denying demolition to a landowner. I provide this background to the Board of Supervisors so that you and the public can understand that the Planning Commission has never voted on the issue as to whether approve the demolition, whether the approval of the demolition should be granted or denied. The Planning Commission only voted to recommend a delay period. The outcome of the Planning Commission vote on whether to allow demolition of these building, buildings is still uncertain. I, for one Planning Commission member, feel that denial is the wrong direction and feel that prior to the Board of Supervisors setting any precedent in these type of cases, that the Planning Commission should revisit the Section 2019 of the Zoning Ordinance and consider whether this power is something that we recommend that our Board of Supervisors have over landowners in Kennett Township. Therefore, I, I feel that the proper resolution of this case is to have the Board act to authorize the demolition permit. Thanks. Thank you, John. <coughs> Thank you. Good evening, members of the board. My name is Mary Ann Rossi. I represent Longwood Gardens in this matter. I want to take some issue with um, Ms. Boyle's presentation. Longwood has never claimed financial hardship with regard to these houses. I think the board has the statement that I made at the February 26th Planning Commission meeting, where I told the Planning Commission this was not an easy decision for Longwood, but it was a clear decision. And the reason that Longwood wishes to demolish the houses is as part of the Meadow Project and with the restoration of the Webb Farm, we want to restore that area of land to horticulture, which is our core mission. In weighing, and we've never said that the houses don't have historical value, they do. And because of that, and to mitigate the demolition, we documented them in the WISE report so that they are documented. We know for posterity when they were constructed, who designed them, who lived there, and, and so on. But what Longwood's vision is, which is part of its core mission, is to restore that landscape to not to mimic a 19th century agrarian landscape, but to be more in character with the 19th century agrarian landscape. So it's a value judgment. And the property owner is asking the township to permit it to carry forward with its judgment that restoration of the landscape, that returning this area to horticulture is more in line with Longwood's mission, vision, and values. Longwood has maintained many structures of significance, and it will continue to do so where it is consistent with its core mission. And we understand the feelings 
of the, the those who oppose the demolition. We're not denigrating their beliefs. We appreciate this process. We have engaged in this process in good faith. But as I said, the decision, while it was not easy, was clear, and we're asking the township to grant the demolition permit so that we can move forward with that vision. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hudson. Any more comments? These are the questions. You have Bob Beckerman, Bob Osterholm, the Planning Commission resident, Planning Commission member. It has nothing to do with the Planning Commission. I just have a question. What was the position of our own historic resource commission? I want to address that. You're going to address that? Okay. I just want to make sure that that was put on record. Yes, it's only in the back. I'm sorry. Yes, again, Mary Sue for observation. The Meadow Project, to my knowledge, which was the relocation of Route 52, is over as far as the public is aware. The area of potential effect was shifted, sparing the historic houses during that project. There is another project, the West Bay Project, which is a 40-year comprehensive plan for Longwood Gardens, which does develop this property, the Webb property. It potentially relocates the entrance of Longwood Gardens to the north side of Longwood, off of 926, which will require further demolition to accommodate those gestures. That is what I'm discussing, not the Meadow Project, just to be correct. If there is a large entertainment complex recommended in their comprehensive plan, which I have observed, and Mr. Hendrick has too, that will have a substantial impact to historic resources, to traffic, to the economies of all three municipalities. And I feel that in a constructive light, all three municipalities and the Longwood Foundation and Corporation should address that in a constructive manner, instead of parceling out a demolition here, a little change there, because you're going to be fighting it for years. Just one comment on Mary Sue's implication that I know something about Longwood's future plans. I have no such information that I'm aware of. You were in the room with me, John, when that plan was demonstrated by the architect a year and a half ago. Let me just clarify that for the board. The West architect gave an overview. I do not interpret that as a presentation of a plan. It was a general talk. All right. My name is Bruce Knapp. I'm president of the Chester County Historic Preservation Network, of which Kennett Township is a member. And I have provided to you a comment in regard to the process. I'd like to read it for the public hearing now. The board of directors of the Chester County Historic Preservation Network respectfully request that the Kennett Township Board of Supervisors support the Kennett Township Planning Commission's request for an additional 90-day review of Longwood Gardens demolition application for three contributing buildings to the Longwood Gardens National Historic District. We've been attending these meetings ever since the Planning Commission. We were notified of the Planning Commission's meeting in February 26 and have had a representative here. The buildings in question, based on this testimony, are in sound physical condition, and they are a significant contributing resource to an existing historic district on a national register of historic places. The Planning Commission, following the Kennett Township recognized review process, voted to request the 90-day review period to fully examine the application, its basis for the demolition permit request, and any possible alternatives or considerations that might lead to the protection 
of these valuable examples of her past. <clears throat> it doesn't seem, although Mr. Elliot, you gave a, uh, a brief summary of the time frames on having the uh, issue tabled for 30 day periods and then until this meeting. Um, I'm unsure if this is following the full 90 day process that is in your ordinances. And if you could explain that, I'd appreciate it. Do you want me to do that now or do uh, you just want to finish? Let me just finish and then I can open it for right. your, your comments. Over 20 years ago, your predecessors on the Board of Supervisors, as well as your community, the Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission, and the United States Department of the Interior, successfully worked to recognize this area as a nationally important site of unique significance. You are today's official stewards of the cultural heritage of your community. The additional review time is necessary to ensure you have the information needed to make a fully informed decision. The extension is a small and brief step when compared to the potential of losing valuable historic resources for the rest of time. Thank you. You talk about the 90 day period, grace period, it's up to 90 days. Mm -hmm. And at one time we were ready to have a vote, but we just decided to grant at least three days, and now we have extended to, to this time. Okay. Does, is that included as part of the up to 90 day period? Yes. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. My name is Larry Hoover. I'm a resident of Wilmington, Delaware, or P.S. Font, Town. Mm -hmm. And I'm just basically concerned uh, preservationists. Um, and I'd like to put in my two cents. Uh, tonight, there's going to be a decision made as to whether to demolish these houses. And if it's denied, um, you can always demolish them next year or five years from now or ten years from now. But once they're demolished, you can never bring them back. It's pretty much like a, a one-way thing. You can't, you can't go back past this decision today. And I think you need to consider what um, the man with the money would have done, and that would be Pierre DuPont. Uh, when he moved out here, he, there was an old house, and which he can tour now, and he had plenty of money. He could have built himself another brand new house, and, but he, he chose to renovate that house and add on to it. And he was clearly, in his mind, a preservationist. He, uh, he built all these other houses, and, and these three houses that are along the road are not an eyesore. They're, of beautiful little cottages. Um, he didn't just hire a builder or a nobody to design them. He got a, a good architect and built them all slightly different, yet slightly, you know, almost the same, and really put a lot of thought into it. And I think if he were here tonight, um, I'm pretty sure he would like to spend some of his billions and do something, pick them up a little bit, move them, anything but destroy them. Because once they're destroyed, mm -hmm. they're gone forever. And I think. He would be appalled at the idea of somebody in the 21st century who's a temporary custodian for his legacy, who had their own plans for the 21st century and would want to get rid of them. I, I think it wouldn't be a good decision to make. Uh, it's one way you can't go back once they're gone. And um, I just think it would be a mistake. You at least need to think about it more. And, uh, you know what's probably going to happen, you know, something else will go along there eventually, and the, the beautiful houses which enhance the landscape will be going to this. So. Wendy? Um, I'm Wendy Cooper, and I am a member of the Township, but I'm simply speaking as a, an individual uh, in the Township. And I just want to say that, first of all, I don't, I don't really think of Longwood as a personal property owner, as someone like myself or anyone else in this room, they're a nonprofit institution. And as an institution, just like the Brandywine Conservancy or Witter Tour or the National Gallery of Art in Washington or the Metropolitan Museum, they're just stewards and trustees of whatever possessions they have for this generation. And then it moves on, and the institution becomes trustee and steward of the next generation, protecting the property whether it's physical property or land or whatever. <coughs> um, and, and 
in that respect, I think that they have an obligation as stewards of a historic district and of these houses to, to respect that. Whatever happens, it just makes me very sad that, first of all, in all of their planning with West 8, et cetera, whether it's a concept plan or whatever, um, that they've never reached out to any of the municipalities that surround them. Not asking their advice, but just seeing where they're positioned and seeing where their plans are going to go that will impact those communities in a very major way. Um, but finally, it makes me tremendously sad that in at least the three meetings that the small group that our subcommittee had with Longwood, bringing to the table on our side various possibilities for negotiation, for negotiation, that not one of those possibilities was ever picked up and countered or discussed or anything. There was just no negotiation. Thank you. Oh, I think we might have some comments up in the front here. Sir, do you have anything to say on this issue before we take a vote? Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, frankly, I'm not sure of the, the issue before us now. I think that what had been recommended uh, was that we extend for the balance of the 90 days to allow the continued negotiation to go on. And um, my understanding was that the, the a core group of the Planning Commission um, was working for, made the recommendation for additional time to work out the following five conditions for uh, action on the demolition appeal. <coughs> and so the record is clear. I wanted to put those five points before all of us and on the record. And this is picking up on Wendy's comments, I think. Conservation easement from Route 1 to Webb Barn. Facade easement on the Webb Barn. Township to be reimbursed for loss of historic buildings. Township to be reimbursed for cost of hiring experts related to this project. And the fifth point, and Jim, you'll correct me if I've misstated these. Uh, Longwood build a dedicated public walking path around the affected area. So those were, from what I understood, to be the areas of negotiation which would permit um, um, a negotiated solution on the question of the demolition. I'm not, I'm not addressing um, John Hadrick's point regarding the power of the board um, under this ordinance to go forward or whether it's appropriate that this township should be doing it. It is, in fact, what our law is, and um, I think we can go forward in that fashion. Um, there's a, there are a number of letters that I have seen, some of which have been passed out tonight, earlier, uh, and um, let's see, uh, Bruce Knapp uh, read us his letter, which is also one of the ones that I have, but I, I think these letters are important uh, to have a part of the record, and so I wanted to, to um, make reference to those letters, and in fact, portions of those letters, just so the record can reflect the broad spectrum of of uh, uh, view on this issue. The first one I want to make reference to is the County Township Historical Commission uh, that um, dated April 29, 2013, which um, um, I want to read one section of it. While the Kennett Township Historical Commission is saddened by the possible loss of the three cottages along Route 1. We understand both the financial and long-term planning issues that Longwood must consider. 
We are aware of all that Longwood has done for the township and by their involvement in various projects have seen evidence of how important the history of Kennett and the surrounding townships is to Longwood. It is our opinion that the three structures do not rise to the level of historical importance which would warrant the denial of demolition. Now, of all the letters that I've seen, that's the only one, frankly, that is in favor of the application. I want to make reference to Bruce Knapp's letter, Chester County Historical Preservation Network, March 18, 2013. And I wanted to make reference to a portion that Bruce has already read to you, but forgive me for being redundant. Over 20 years ago, your predecessors on the Board of Supervisors, as well as your community, the Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission, and the U.S. Department of the Interior, successfully worked to recognize this area as a nationally important site of unique significance. You are today's official stewards of the cultural heritage of your community. And parenthetically, again, that picks up on Wendy's thoughts, I think, a little bit. The additional review time is necessary to ensure you have the information needed to make a fully informed decision. On April 13, 2013, Kathleen Rengert sent a letter to the Kennett paper. Um, and in her poetic perspective, she said in part, so when and if the cottages are demolished, I wonder whether the people driving by will notice their absence or slow down to enjoy the new landscape. I wonder whether the many thousands of people expected to attend the proposed Longwood Entertainment Center will connect more deeply to the gardens and the place that is Longwood. When the Webb Barn is a museum piece, will the guests connect more deeply to the land and our history with it? What is that ethereal thing that connects us to a place and to ourselves? Let us consider well our options. Kim Burdick, advisor emeritus of the National Trust for Historic Preservation, wrote a letter to the um, to Lisa and to um, to Lisa Moore and Sarah Meadows, dated April 12, 2013, and he observed. The houses are a significant part of an important regional and national business history that should be honored. I have seen many towns lured into the easy decision of tearing old places down, then soon regretting their loss and the visual distortion of their own history. Continuing to put these into the record, um, there's a letter dated May 2, 2013 from Preservation Alliance um, by the Executive Director Caroline Boyce, who writes in part, the three houses are contributing structures within the Longwood Gardens Historic District and embody the rich history of the township. Ideally, new uses for the buildings could be identified that would allow them to remain in their historic setting. <clears throat> and on April 15, 2013, uh, A. Roy Smith, uh, writing as an individual, but nevertheless a chairman of the Preservation Pennsylvania um, organization, wrote to the uh, township supervisors in part, while the intent of Longwood to create more green space and restore the landscape to what it was in the late 19th, early 20th century is admirable, to do so at the expense of these three buildings is not the way to achieve this goal. Overriding this current vision for more green space should be the vision created by Mr. DuPont when he commissioned these buildings to be built. And then 
referring to, <coughs> excuse me, the Cachel group. Did I pronounce that correctly? Cachely. Cachely. Um, from Timothy Beaver, uh, professional engineer, dated February 28, 2013. <coughs> um, this is a letter to the Planning Commission. And he says, in part, all three houses were in good condition and showed little to no signs of water damage, which is one issue that typically compromises structures of this age, 1920s construction. Structurally, all three houses are in good condition and should need little or no, excuse me, need little to no work to support residential loading. Um, this letter was prompted because um, this organization was uh, requested by the Planning Commission to comment on the structural conditions of the three houses. And I, I also want to include a um, letter from the Thornberry Township, Delaware County Historical Commission dated the uh, 12th of April, 2013, addressed to the supervisors. We strongly suggest you come to an agreement with Longwood for adaptive reuses of these buildings. Use these three buildings of an example of how to perform adaptive reuses. Show the process. The first vision Longwood had, a simple one, tear down these buildings and take people through the process of how they were then saved and became a viable asset to the gardens. This will serve to encourage future generations, as I suggest Pierre would want to do, to do as he did, lead by example. And the, the last letter, if I can find it here, is from Pocopson Township, dated April 8, 2013, signed by Ricky Stumpo, supervisor, in which she comments in part, I acknowledge that the Township Planning Commission recognizes that efforts should be made to preserve the historic structures, and I agree with their recommendation to explore alternative plans for the cottages. So, I think these letters all of them are important to, um, to guide us as to how we view this and where we should be going. And I'm of the opinion that we should be uh, taking more time and having more conversations um, to find a way to um, address the five conditions that, the, that that core group of the Planning Commission were recommending. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Longwood Gardens has been a good neighbor for many years. They have responded positively to prior concerns of our historic commission. Both our historic commission and our neighboring one have indicated that all these things considered, these buildings are not worth saving. I therefore move we unconditionally approve the Longwood demolition permit tonight. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Yes, I second the motion. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, I move the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Opposed. Uh, one question, uh, Ms. Rossi. Yes, sir. Um, so, so, uh, anecdotally, um, there seems to be an interest by the Longwood Fire Company and or perhaps the Kent Fire Company to use those buildings uh, for practice. Um, if that's okay, would you be good enough to pass that through and allow them, if you choose, to do that? Because everything now is in your hands. Yes, we will. That's fine. Okay. Okay, we have one other thing. The case property easement. Sorry, you asked us to put on the agenda. No, actually, Mr. Chairman, I did not. It was a request to be placed on the agenda by Quinn Lacey. Well, well, um, yeah. 
um, regardless, I guess there's we'll nothing. I don't know that there's anything to discuss. Well, I, 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 don't, know whether, I don't know that she has anything to the purpose. That's why. I understand. Um, I don't think there's anything to discuss at this point either, quite frankly, because I agree with that. Yeah. There, there are a number of issues that are out floating, but there's mm -hmm. nobody here to bring closure to it, and we haven't really had a chance I, to I go further. I summarize further. rather quickly. Um, uh, there was a movement to put a conservation easement on the case property. Um, at the same time and before, um, the case property was successful in um, Establishing three buildable lots on Byer Road, four acres each. Um, the process for conservation easements generally talks that the applicant needs to get a, a an appraisal, which they did, and we chose to get an appraisal, which we did, and we made an offer for a conservation easement that was rejected, uh, and the offer. The rejected amount asking was very well in excess of that offer. I don't want to go into any further numbers. I agree. Okay. Uh, other items. Dog leash ordinance. Okay. What is it more? So, well, then I need, I need the plan sign in case regarding. Oh, yes, that's fine. Before you guys yes. walk out the door. That's, that's nothing to do with it. Right. Is that something we have to have for you? No. I didn't need you guys to sign off today because they've already been approved. Yeah, then we are acting on tonight. Yeah. Well, no, you don't have to. You guys already made your motion on them. Yeah, they've already been approved. Yeah, so we're just doing the signature. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Well, since we have extra time, I'd like to talk to you guys a little further about. I have a question about process. I thought that work sessions were meetings where the board would not approve official. Uh, decisions and this would be done at the board of supervisors meeting only. You know, this is an advertised public meeting at legal standing. I know. Thank you. Are you talking well, about Longwood Gardens? Yes, I'm talking you about Longwood Gardens. Thank you. Thank you. I, I repeat what I said. The reason I had to put it on that tonight is because yeah. the supervisors extended the time until tonight. So I had no choice but to put it on there. <coughs> We're not prohibited from doing it. We just said we generally would not approve anything. There's always exceptions to that, though. Well, did yeah. that have to be done tonight? We chose to do it tonight. Mm -hmm. You did. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that is a big surprise. I thought you had agreed that we would not do that at workshop sessions. I'm sorry, that was never an agreement that I was part of. Well, I know in the past some of you have been here when we talked about Marshall Bridge, the bank erosion. So testing was done on the bank by our engineering firm, and they came up with three options of what we can do to stabilize the bank. So Roger and I met with our engineer earlier this evening. And I have a map up here if anybody's interested in looking at it. Supervisor, you guys want to look at it? So there's two options stabilizing the bank. And the option that Roger and, and our engineer agree with is about 20,000 more than the other option because it, it extends and covers the entire area. The, um, the option that's 20000 cheaper will stop right at where, correct me if I'm wrong, Roger, stop right at where the erosion is beginning, and we feel that the stabilization and the guide rail needs to go down further to stop further um, erosion. The, what they would have to do is they would have to put a material in there called GeoWeb, and they have it near uh, Westchester Airport. It looks like rock along the um, bank. It's a material that would go down there. On the um, stream, bra stream bank, and it's like a foot high, approximately. Oh, yeah. Okay. So they would have to put a drainage pipe along Marshall Bridge on the opposite side of the road from the stream bank. 
the road would be angled about an inch and a half higher on the stream side so that all the water flows to the other side of the road and then goes along the drainage. The, we would have to repave the road, put in all new guide rail. I think that's, isn't that like 300 feet? Yes. Mm -hmm. And the new guide rail uh, specifications are a panel guide rail, not the chain guide rail that's out there now. Mm -hmm. There'll be new piping put in all along the road. And the estimate is 208000 which includes a $27,000 contingency. So this project, it would have to go out for bid. And it's a, the type of system that it is, it can be expanded in the future. So if, if the stream bank reverts further downstream, the system can be expanded to fix that. Yes. Uh, this material uh, you mentioned, are you talking about gabions? It's called geo -Wet. Um We have one of our engineers here. If I could ask no, you to expand on the material. Yes, uh, this is Ross Bickler with Gilmer Associates. And um, the, the product is sort of a uh, cell, and it forms a, like a group of honeycomb shapes, as an example. And so you put these units into the soil and backfill them and feed them. And between the plastic structure, like embedded into the soil and the uh, vegetation that helps to prevent erosion of the uh, top surface of the soil and stabilize the soil. So the roots, if I may, sure. the roots of the trees and vegetation would grow into this? Yeah, this, you can do, with these uh, geocells, you can build them either with <coughs> soil and feed it with grass, in which case the grass roots would uh, grow in. Um, for the absolute most stability, you can fill it with stone. Uh, stone is a little more expensive, and there's, there's the visual aspect of stone. So those are two options that are still being weighed. You know, we have to balance the aesthetics and the, uh, the stability. Yeah. John? Uh, I think I know the answer to this, but I'd like to get it for the record. Does the township have sufficient funds to cover this unexpected cost? Yes. Yes, we do. Yes, we have to cover it. We do have to. Good. Do you need some action from us tonight? I just wanted to know your thoughts on how we should proceed with this option. I, I think we need to do this, and the longer we wait, the worse it's going to get. Yeah, I mean, we have no choice. We have to do something. Yeah. The, the only option, the only question was which option. The, the option is 20000 cheaper wouldn't, it means we wouldn't fix put guide rail and um, drainage pipe along this area which needs to be done because um, it needs to be extended past the we area that's we, we, we wouldn't with the other option. No. Would you define the options for us please? Yes. So option one, which is the one that our engineer and Roger recommend, this is what it consists of. We would have site clearing and debris re removal, earthwork and excavation, Erosion and sediment pollution control, and then the stabilization of geocell, which is the material that we put in there. Um, then the storm system would be installed all along that area. Guide rail would be installed 300 feet. The road would be repaved, and the total comes to 208,000, which includes the contingency. That's the expected price. That's the yeah. expected. Mm -hmm. The only difference between that option and the option that's 20000 less is there will be no guide rail on this section and no piping on that section. So if you put the guide rails and the piping in, it would, it would duplicate in every point the first proposal? Yes. That seems strange. Well, no, no, it would be very extended. The second pro it, it would do the same as the first proposal. It's just the second proposal wouldn't address this beginning area. In other words, it just instead of going to shorter it would be feet, right. I'm going to make an eyeball estimate. It would be 50 feet less, and that's where it gets a cost. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but our, our problem way. goes at 300 feet. Exactly. Well, I would so we need what, do we, what do we need the second one for? Yeah. It doesn't cover our needs. Well, well, I could address that. The, uh, the most severe problems that we're experiencing 
are in that uh, from here from this region down this direction. Yeah. That's the right. most right. severe. There is a problem that is developing here that we've noticed yes. that if we were to extend the improvements, we could correct it all at once. Yeah. And it makes so no sense, sense to do that. Let's do it. Point we need yeah. to do yeah. the option. Are there, are there any other options other than this one? There's a, an option much more expensive, which would be like a long route 202 where you build a wall. And our engineer said that would be over twice the cost mm -hmm. and it would serve the same purpose as this. And be equally as successful, more successful, less successful? They said they would be... They, well, Ross, you can answer, but I, when I asked Bob the question, he said they would both be just as success, successful. Yeah, I think uh, it's, it's very likely, very likely that what we have proposed there would effectively stabilize the slope and prevent further problems. Um, there may be a higher degree of certainty <coughs> with the wall method, because that is certainly stronger, but the, the amount of cost increase uh, compared to the additional benefit, we think that the the method here, which is the slope stabilization, regrading, and drainage improvements, is going to be the most cost-effective way to, uh, with relatively high certainty, uh, fix the problems. How about the duration of performance between the the wall and the um, this proposal here? Do, are they both going to last as long and perform equally for the length of that time? Or is there a drop-off different from one to the other? Well, the one one uh, thing to keep in mind is the, the wall system re required a lot more maintenance. Yes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we wanted to try and keep it a simple system. Um, in terms of total lifespan, I think I'm thinking they would be similar, but the cost of maintenance during that whole lifespan would be significantly higher with the wall design. Thank you. Okay. One last question. One last question. Mm -hmm. uh, I sent you guys a copy of the dog leash, mm -hmm. not leash, mm -hmm. for, leash. The, for the borough, from the borough, and it's specifically for the park. Mm -hmm. Because the borough adopted an ordinance that requires anybody who brings a dog into Anthony Park to put the dog on a leash. They asked that we adopt the same ordinance as the Parks and Anthony Township. For just the park. For just the park. Albert, how do you feel about that? Well, I recommend it. The uh, state dog law says a person like a dog on a leash or under his control. Mm -hmm. When that happens, some dogs are excited by children. Mm -hmm. And we've had incidents where these dogs are normally under uh, owner's control. It frightens the child, goes up to the child, things like that. So that's why I'm recommending it also that we do this. And the enforcement is we'll advise the people you have to have your dog on the leash in this area. Not something you're going to go out and write tickets for, just to write Joe Tuffle, I walk my pup in the park often. And uh, I think a lot of local tenant people unleash the dog mm -hmm. so the dog can poop and they don't have to clean it up. They pretend they don't see. And that's part of the corruption burns, so that's part of their problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm for that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> It okay. seems like right, something okay. we should do. So. We, we have to end this session. Uh, thank you all for coming. And the Planning Commission meets in seven and a half minutes. Are we doing a